Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting game, it's from round 6 of the 2018 Batumi Chess Olympiad, sorry about this, this is for later. Uh, it's a game between Shakhtar and Mamedyarov, you've already seen a very nice game between him and Levon Aranyan and uh, thank you all for that uh, uh, explanation in the comments uh, how his uh, t-shirt with the cat on it actually means catastrophe. Uh, but uh, even though he lost his game against uh, Mamedyarov, that game was nowhere near a, <laughs> a catastrophe, so... Uh, uh, I didn't uh, I didn't figure it out, so thank you for that, uh, and uh, it all does make sense. Now, here uh, Mamedyarov is facing uh, the strongest uh, Czech Grandmaster, David Navara, uh, so it's um, Azerbaijan versus uh, the Czech Republic, uh, a very a very nice game, and it's uh, uh, I'll um, go into the title of the video a bit later. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's uh, check out this very nice game. Uh, Mamedyarov with the white pieces opens with d4, uh, d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, knight to f3, d5, uh, c4 and d6, again transposing into the queen's gambit declined. Uh, knight to c3 and c5 now. Uh, we have pawn captures on d5, knight captures on d5. Uh, Navarra signalizes that he is willing to exchange everything. Uh, e4, knight captures on c3, b captures on c3, c captures on d4, uh, c captures on d4 and even bishop to b4 check. Uh, we have uh, bishop to d2 blocking, uh, bishop captures, queen captures, and here Navarra castles. So uh, if you look at this uh, uh, position straight out of the opening, it's only moved 10. It's a very theoretical line. One very uh, interesting detail is uh, all uh, up until move 17, we're, we're going to get back to that. Um, they didn't really, it, it's, um, it's an understatement to say that they were blitzing out the moves uh, because they were spending like... Uh, a second or two for a move, perhaps for some moves uh, like six seconds. Uh, I think uh, the most uh, that was spent was 30 seconds on the move, uh, all up until uh, move 17. So this is how much a uh, theoretical line uh, this is, and both of them are very well prepared. Uh, bishop to c4. So if you look at this position, uh, out of the opening, black did manage to exchange some pieces. Uh, you know, there is not a lot of tension. White does have a stronger center, uh, but black does have a two against one pawn advantage on the queen side. So white will try to plan the king set in, in the center, and black, if uh, he will be able to develop, then he will look for his chances on the queen side, of course. So let's see uh, how Navarra does it. He develops knight to d7. Uh, we have castles by Mamedyarov. Uh, b6, preparing to develop the light square bishop, uh, rook a to d1, and the bishop to b7. Uh, just normal developing moves, rook f to e1, rook to c8, bishop to b3, getting the bishop out of the way, uh, rook to e8, and now h3. Uh, h6, uh, both of them making some room for the uh, for their kings, uh, queen to f4, and uh, here comes uh, the first move that took a bit longer. Here Navarra took uh, three and a half minutes for this queen to c7 move. Uh, Navarra offers a trade of queens, and uh, if you accept the trade of queens, it's uh, basically a draw offer. For example, if queen captures, rook captures, you can go d5, captures, captures, uh, rook, rook defends rook, rook captures, rook captures, and now white would have a pass pawn and uh, a pass to d pawn, uh, but it would be very hard to push uh, for something from this position, and when black stabilizes, uh, he will be able to push uh, uh, his pawns on the, uh, on the queen side, as he does have the advantage here. Uh, on the other hand, uh, after this queen to c7 move, this position was already on the board. Uh, for example, it was uh, already on the board uh, in 2018 in a women's uh, Russian championship uh, between uh, Alisa Galiamova and Polina Shuvalova, where queen to h4 was played and the white was able to win this game. Uh, here Mamedyarov uh, finds a different idea. He also avoids the queen trade as he doesn't want a draw with the white pieces. Uh, he blocks with e5. And now the game continues. Uh, Mamedyarov took some... Uh, over 10 minutes uh, to play this move. I think it was uh, somewhere around 11 minutes. Uh, so the first move where Mamedyarov actually had to think. Uh, wh what do you do here? Well, by playing e5, okay, you do avoid the queen trade, but you open up uh, the, uh, black slide square bishop, which now becomes a very strong piece. On the other hand, you also weaken the d5 square. Uh, white slide square bishop is also very strong, so now you have to figure out what you want to do. Uh, Navarra goes knight to f8, and it's a very nice idea, uh, you want to go uh, get the knight over to g6, uh, where uh, it, it comes to g6 with a tempo, and from there it will be a very nice defensive piece, and perhaps in the future it can come to e7, and perhaps d5 or f5. Uh, but uh, Navarra wanted it... Uh, uh, to go to f8 and then to g6. If he wanted it to go to d5 immediately, he could have just played knight to f6. 
uh, the pawn cannot capture the knight as queen captures queen as possible. And then after white tries to dislodge the queen, for example, then comes queen, queen to b8 and now whatever plan white, dec white decides to go for, uh, probably knight d2 as uh, now the d6 square is available for white's knight, this would definitely be a plan, but black could definitely uh, get a hold of this d5 square if this was Navarra's plan. Uh, but Navarra decides against it, so he goes knight to f8. Uh, we have knight to d2, Mamedyarov plans either most likely not knight e4 because uh, black will not allow this knight to come to d6, so he will perhaps uh, definitely capture it. Uh, but knight to c4 to d6 is definitely an idea, so you have to prevent it. Knight to g6 first uh, with an attack against the queen, queen to g4 and now b5. You do have to prevent this knight from jumping to c4. Uh, knight to e4, now definitely the threat is knight to d6 to fork the rooks, so you do have to capture it. Uh, bishop captures, we have queen captures, and now comes a5. So Navarra seems to have stabilized the, the position, and now he starts uh, playing uh, on the queen side where he has the, the pawn majority. Uh, d5 by Mamedyarov. Uh, a very nice move uh, because you really have to see what happens if a4 is played. If a, if a4 is played immediately, then pawn captures here. Uh, you give up the bishop, but only temporarily. Pawn captures bishop and now comes rook to d7. Uh, with an attack on the queen and also preparing uh, pawn captures on f7. After queen captures on e5, e captures on f7 with check. You have to move the king. King h7 now comes uh, capturing with the queen. Rook captures and now uh, it would be very easy to... At the blunder with queen captures queen. Uh, now after knight, knight captures here, you can't... Uh, uh, play a capture some b3 uh, with the idea that okay the knight cannot capture your rook because it's pinned <laughs> but knight to f3 is a possibility uh, now pawn captures rook captures here and here even though white is up a, uh, up a pawn uh, with uh, such a terrible pawn structure black would be able to hold this to a draw uh, but uh, after this uh, rook captures an e8 you simply don't capture but simply move the queen for example queen e3 and now this b2 pawn will not be all that powerful uh, there's no way to support it because the other b pawn is in the way so white would have a, a very nice uh, winning position here so after d5 uh, we have e captures on d5 first rook captures on d5 and only now a4 uh, and okay, bishop to d1, uh, we have queen to b7, now uh, preparing uh, for a queen trade. Uh, bishop to f3, uh, we have knight to e7, now forcing a queen trade. Uh, rook to d6, queen captures, bishop captures, uh, and here we have the critical moment in the game. Uh, Navarro has to figure out uh, how to go about this. He still uh, has the advantage on the queen side. Definitely moves like b4 and b3 would be favorable for him. Uh, one advantage that Mamedyarov has is the advantage of bishop against a knight. Uh, the, the play is on both sides of, sides of the board, so a bishop is definitely, uh, you know, a, a better piece here. Uh, and uh, with a move like rook to b8, uh, preparing b4, b3, Navarra would still be definitely very much in this game. Uh, but instead, after this bishop to e4 move, Navarra played knight to g6. So this wasn't... Uh, this wasn't the greatest of ideas. Uh, Navarra's idea was uh, if bishop captures, then pawn captures, and if rook captures, yes, white does win a pawn, uh, but b4 is coming, and uh, very soon uh, uh, black would also have a, a pass pawn that will already be on b3. Rook to b8 will definitely be a plan, and uh, this was uh, uh, most likely Navarra's reasoning. Uh, but after this knight to g6 move, uh, he missed one very nice move by Mamedyarov, so feel free to pause the video here uh, and uh, try to find the move Mamedyarov played. Uh, I'll give it a couple of seconds for you as usual. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are truly an, an excellent player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, Mamedyarov played pawn to e6. And it seems uh, very reasonable. You cannot capture here, because then your knight... Uh, is, is free for grabs, uh, so you do have to figure out what to do here. Uh, possibilities are knight to e7 and knight to f4, and both are uh, both are okay. And Navarro goes for knight to f4, uh, but here comes the problem. Uh, e captures on f7 with check. King captures on f7, and now comes g3. And now uh, you see that uh, black really doesn't have all that many options. Um... Uh, what do you do here? If you go knight to e6, you simply get pinned. Bishop to d5, and there's a triple attack against your knight. Uh, there's no way to add more defenders. You simply lose the piece here and the game. Uh, on the other hand, after g3, uh, if you go something like knight to h5, then simply bishop to g6, again winning. 
uh, king has to move simply rook captures a nice forcing line and now it all depends on what kind of a person you are do you want to uh, grab the rook and then be up the exchange or grab the knight and be up a piece uh, your choice really but uh, you know anything you do b6 the pawns are now falling down uh, there's nothing to do here uh, so after g3 navara uh, goes for the only line available to him uh, he goes king to e7 simply attacks the rook and now the rook has to move and only then will he move the knight uh, we have rook to d2 now the knight can move we have knight to e6 and it's not really a great square for the knight because the king is now uh, an e-file in front of uh, mamadyarov's rook uh, rook to d5 first uh, attacking the b5 pawn uh, so what do you do here? b4, you do have to defend it. If you lose the, the advantage on the queen side, then you're just worse until the end of the game. Uh, and Mamedyarov goes f4. A very nice move. Uh, at some point, that, uh, he's definitely preparing f5. And it's not all that uh, easy to stop f5. You can't really move the king. Uh, the d-file is covered by the rook. Uh, and you, you have to play something. If you try to move it, for example, king to f7, you're just going to get a rook to f5 check. Now you can't go here because of all the discoveries. Uh, if you go back to g8, you're just going to get pinned with bishop to d5. So you just have to go back uh, and then you get rook to b5 attacking the pawn. If you lose the pawn, the game's over. So after rook to b8 the defending, you would simply capture, capture. And after bishop to d5, you would again pin this knight. Uh, rook would defend it, but then f5 wins it uh, definitely. So not not all that easy to parry this, uh, parry this f5 move. Uh, Navarra tried it with b3, as the line we've just shown doesn't work for black. So after b3, we have a captures on b3, a captures on b3, uh, and now feel free to pause the video again and find the move that uh, w <laughs> wins the game uh, for Mamedyarov. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds to decide uh, whether we want to do it or not, as usual. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it and uh, who were able to solve the first one as well, uh, truly congratulations, you are really an amazing player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, if you found f5, f5 doesn't work. Uh, because after f5, knight to c5 comes. Uh, the bishop is under attack and there are no good discoveries because your rook and pawn are blocking your own bishop. There's no bishop to g6 discovery winning the rook or anything. Uh, the move you had to find was actually bishop to g6, which is Mamidyar, what Mamedyarov played in the game, moving the bishop uh, with an attack against the rook. Uh, and here, it doesn't really matter. Of course, you have to move the rook, but it doesn't matter where you move it. If you move it here, uh, the idea is pretty simple. Uh, uh, like <laughs> like the move that was actually played in the game. For example, rook to e5, a double attack against the knight. Once the knight is defended, uh, simply f5, you attack it again. After black pushes b2, you will simply exchange everything here. You are now up a piece, and after rook to c1, you will simply ignore it, king to f2. And now after rook captures, king captures, and king captures, uh, you will have a bishop that is guarding b1, and you are, of course, completely winning here. Uh, so... Uh, after this bishop to g6 move, uh, Navarra tried rook to f8, but the idea is pretty similar. Simply f5 immediately, uh, pinning, uh, attacking the pinned piece. Uh, rook to f6 defending, and now comes rook captures uh, on e6. Uh, rook captures, pawn captures, uh, and here b2. Uh, Mamidyarov played rook to b5, you have to put a rook behind a passed pawn. Uh, king to f6 attacking the bishop, bishop to h7, and uh, after bishop to h7 on move 41, uh, David Navarra resigned the game. So uh, a great victory for uh, Shahir Mamidyarov and uh, a great victory for Azerbaijan, uh, who are now uh, sole leaders. Uh, well, not really sole leaders, but they are on top, as you see, Azerbaijan and Poland. So uh, it will be definitely a clash of titans uh, in round seven. Uh, Shahir Mamidyarov will face Duda, uh, who is having an amazing tournament, and really Mamidyarov will be uh, a true test of skill for him. Uh, there's really nothing to do here. Uh, rook to c1, check will be met with king g2. Uh, and now you're not in, you can't uh, give a check. Uh, you have to uh, keep an eye on the b2 pawn. Uh, and there's the black simply isn't in time to do everything. If you try to trap the bishop with g6, uh, simply rook captures on b2. And after king to g7, rook to b7, check is coming. The, you can't capture the bishop after you move the king e7, and it, it is all over for black. So yeah, after bishop to h7, uh, a, a wonderful victory for Mamidyarov, and he's really gaining up on raiding uh, him and Caruana. Uh, if if they continue playing like this, they might even catch up to <laughs> Carlsen uh, until the end of the Olympiad. Highly unlikely, but you know anything can happen. And uh, this is what I meant by the title of the video. This um, 
just let me get to it after bishop to e4 uh like we said with rook to b8 you can simply start pushing here and wh white will be better a bishop will be better than a knight but with two to one advantage on the on the queen side you want to start uh, pushing your pawns as soon as possible so this is what i meant knight to g6 uh, how come in your own games, uh, or perhaps if you're playing a tournament and uh, Navarro is over 2700 rated, uh, how come your opponent that uh, <laughs> that would be rated, let's say 1500, 1700, 1900, 2300, uh, you, you'd think, he, of course he would play rook to b8 and start pushing the pawn. Why would he play knight to g6 and blunder like this? And you might even ask yourselves, uh, how come... Uh, uh, David Navarro, uh, over 2700 rated Grandmaster, would uh, would do something like this. Uh, well, that's because uh, Mamedyarov uh, really is playing like an engine. He He's making him think uh, every move and he has to play it uh, out uh, to perfection to match Mamedyarov's play. And this is very tiring. Move after move after move after move, you have to spend more and more time and really calculate everything because you know Mamedyarov is playing like a machine. And this will tire you and the end result will be uh, such a mistake like knight to g6 uh, that allows e6 and uh, it's uh, seems like a, seems like a silly move uh, for black to make but it's not all that hard to believe when when you see how much white is is pushing you to uh, to think and to to play the game uh, to, uh, to perfection so yeah just something I wanted to mention because it's really a, a really a theoretical struggle all the way to move 17 like we've mentioned then that e5 move and only, only then did the players start wasting time. So really, uh, this knight to g6 really, really an, an amazing uh, way to uh, to give up the game, and such an important game in the Olympiad. Uh, but yeah, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying the coverage uh, of the Olympiad so far. Like we said, today is going to be a feisty battle between uh, Mamidarov and Duda, and also. Uh, Croatia is uh, currently 18, but they are facing United States, who are currently uh, number three. It will be a really uh, an excellent opportunity for Ivan Sharic, uh, who is playing board one for Croatia, uh, to take a shot at uh, Fabiano Coruana, World Chess Championship challenger, as uh, uh, Sharic already defeated Magnus Carlsen in the Olympiad once. So it would be it would be <laughs> it's definitely a nice opportunity for him. Very eager to see how that ends up. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jason Tigg, uh, Henry Gabrielson, John Armani, uh, Marcello Andrade, and uh, Brian Colling for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with another interesting video. And yes, uh, we will return to the Bobby Fischer series uh, as soon as we cover the Olympiad, and if I get a bit more time throughout the day, I'm going to throw in a Fisher video as well. So thank you all, and I'll see you soon.